Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. On today's program, we're going to spend some time with our friends with Suffolk Public Libraries to talk about the programs they offer to patrons of all ages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to On the Scene. Again, we're coming to you from Morgan Memorial Library to talk about some of the great services offered by the Suffolk Public Library System. And joining us for this particular segment, we have Allison Lauer, who is the Youth and Family Services Manager, and Sarah Townsend, a relatively new addition to the Suffolk Public Library System. And thank you for being with us, Sarah, who's the Outreach Services Manager. Again, thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks. Well, glad let's to be start. Here. Glad you are here. And let's start talking about children's programs, which I believe is your specialty. It is. And if you could kind of highlight some of the things that are ongoing or perhaps upcoming that we want to let our uh, viewers know about. Yes, we have a lot of new programs that we've started in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have our traditional story time programs, which are um, at both the North Suffolk location and the Morgan location. Those are twice a week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay. At the Morgan location, we have the, um, a toddler time at 10 o'clock and a preschool time at 10.30. Okay. North Suffolk, we have two toddler times because those are very popular classes, right. at one at 9.30, one at 10, and a preschool time at 10.30. Now, how, do, how does someone go about signing up? And I know, again, those fill up kind of quickly, so I don't know how your registration process works and how you get space in there. For the Actually, for our story times, our toddler and preschool times, mm -hmm. they are no registration required, okay. so you can just drop into those. Great. Um, many of our other programs are Require registration, but for right. those two particular story times, they do not. Okay. Um, and we also have baby story times, so okay. that do require registration. Right. Uh, those so registration for the next session of that starts February 18th. Okay. Those are on Thursdays at the North Suffolk Library. There's one for babies birth through 12 months, and there's one for babies 12 months through 24 months. Okay. Uh, first one's at 9:15. The second one's at 10:30. Okay. We also have one at Morgan for zero to 12 months on Tuesdays at 9:15. Now, with those story time events that you're talking about, is it staff that is handling the reading? Yes, okay. staff are handling the reading okay. with, the, um, and it's a complete. It's like a presentation, basically. Right. Okay. Got it. Now, of course, those are some of our younger residents. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything maybe for the, the middle schoolers and high schoolers? I know there's a lot of programs that are out there. We're still working on our teen, developing our teen programs. Right. We did just start developing a whole bunch of new programs for the elementary school age. Okay. We uh, have uh, our Lego Club program, which is expanded to the Morgan Library. Okay. That's twice a month at both North Suffolk and at Morgan. Super exciting, a great time for the kids to come <laughs> in and play with Legos, sure. lots of interaction. Right. They totally get to meet other kids who really love Legos too. Mm -hmm. We've also started two, a new program called Creation Exploration, which is all about, uh, it's kind of an educational program with a fun hands-on element. We have one at uh, North Suffolk on the 10th at okay. 4, and that's all about sound and making noise. And we have one here in Morgan on the 18th at 4, and that is about uh, actually forensic science. It's right. called investigation. So you're telling me we're having sound and noise events in a library? We are that having like sound a and noise events. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make some noise makers. It's going to be a really good time. Good deal. Now, of course, all the programs we're talking about, I believe, are all free. Correct? Yes. So that's All one of the great things. Free, okay, yes. so that's a good deal. And of course, again, it gives you a chance to get into our facilities and, and meet the staff, which mm -hmm. of course, these are really staff driven facilities as far as the services are being offered. Friendly faces greeting you at the door and taking you around to help you with things as you go through. Uh, anything else as far as in the youth category that maybe we'd like to bring up? Oh, I would love to talk to you about our BARKS program. Okay. A BARKS program is uh, books and reading for kids in Suffolk. Mm -hmm. It's actually a partnership that the library is um, involved with with the Suffolk Humane Society. It's their program and they are coming into the library to do it with us. Basically what it is, is it's a reading to therapy dogs okay. program. So children would come into the library after they've signed up for their program sure. and get a chance to read to a variety of different dogs of all shapes and sizes. And what's the theory behind it as far as the, what's the interaction between the child and then the dog? Well, for many children, reading can be something that is difficult mm -hmm. or something that they're shy about, especially when it comes to reading out loud. Sure. Dogs offer a very non-judgmental, friendly way to practice your reading, gain the confidence that you need to become a good reader and to um, you know, love reading for the rest of your life as right. well. Now, of course, you're talking about therapy dogs. So again, they've been specially trained. Mm -hmm. So again, if you have a child that might be you know, thinking, oh, this dog's going to dump jump on. It's mm -hmm. not, that's not the case in these situations, right. correct? Correct. All the dogs are licensed by Therapy Dogs International. Uh, there are certain rules that they have to apply to follow. Uh, they also go through an orientation with Suffolk Humane Society to make sure they're all good tempered dogs. Right. Um, it's actually a great experience for children who are timid at dogs because there's dogs of all sizes mm -hmm. and it's a friendly safe atmosphere that they can 
walk up to the dog, learn about the dog, and the dog is not going to jump up on them right. or you know be very excited, probably just lie there and wag its tail. <laughs> now, I believe you said that each program or each session is going to be one hour long, mm -hmm. once a month, mm -hmm. on the third Saturday of the month, is that third correct? Third Saturday of the okay. month at the North Suffolk Library. So we're kicking it off, what, February 15th? February 15th. Okay. Uh, as of this morning, there were still spaces available, okay. so you, you can sign up by calling the North Suffolk Library. Okay. And again, space is limited on these, mm -hmm. but I believe you also have a wait list. So we again, do depending have upon how the yes. slots go, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, do you sign up per month or do you sign up for the program and you're guaranteed a spot or how does that typically you work? You sign up every month okay. to allow the most number of children to I get understand. in. I understand. Mm -hmm. And of course, that the BARCS program that you talked about is a great way to showcase the partnerships that are available or are going to be available, I should say, through Suffolk Public Libraries. And Sarah, I think that's where you come in, talking about as far as the partnership opportunities and maybe some of the thinking about what we're trying to do with Suffolk Public Libraries and partnering with either business community partners or, or, or public par private partners, I should say. So Sarah, Sarah, tell us a little bit about what you do here for Suffolk Public Libraries and sort of maybe your philosophy on developing those partnerships that we're talking about. So part of what I do is look for community partners, groups, organizations that have missions that intersect with what we do. Mm -hmm. And I look at what their needs are and what our needs are and how we can collaborate. And right. the Barks program is a great example of that, of a group that had a tutoring program in place. We needed some elementary school programming. They needed a space. It was a perfect fit. So part of what I do is reach out to groups and individuals that might have those needs or have things that we need and okay. find ways that we can work together. It's, the philosophy is really finding ways to take our services beyond the walls of our libraries Indeed. and really be a part of the community. Now, if someone out there is thinking, you know, I have a situation or something I might like to share, well, how could they go about contacting you and maybe what's the best way to kind of start trying to build on that collaboration? The best thing to do is to call me here. I work at the Morgan Library, okay. so to call the Morgan Library, ask for Sarah Townsend, and we can start a conversation. Um, I'm out in the community, I'm in schools, I'm in community groups, and so if you see me, come up, introduce yourself, and let's start a conversation and see how we can work together. Okay. Now, of course, when we're talking about these partnerships, we're not just gearing it toward one particular segment of our population. We're looking for any opportunities, as you said, that can help grow the library, and as you know, to get it kind of outside of the walls that we're constrained with, constrained with here. Um, so, I mean, any, any kind of general, generic kind of ideas that you may have and opportunities you may be looking for, again, to reach those different segments of our population? So one of the things I'm working on right now is developing services for seniors. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working with the Senior Services of Southeastern Virginia to develop some programming for the seniors in this area. Okay. And we actually, March 10th, are going to have our first Medicare counseling session here at Morgan nice. uh, with that group. They have counselors that come in and help seniors uh, understand their benefits and help right. them change them if they need to. So I'm looking at, for more opportunities to help that demographic in this area as well. And of course, I'm assuming we're looking to utilize all three of our facilities as far as if you have to have something inside. You mentioned the one event coming up in March, again, with the, with the conference space and the meeting areas that we have. But again, I guess you're also willing, as we noted, to kind of take the show on the road, so to speak, right? Correct. We're looking to develop those services in all three of our locations as well as using our vehicles, which right now include vans and a bookmobile, to right. take them beyond our buildings and really take our services out into Suffolk, which is a huge geographic area, Indeed. and so there's a lot of need beyond these buildings. Okay, and again, you, you mentioned schools, so again, you're out there reaching out to these, these community partners as well. Certainly, again, we know that they're welcome to contact you if they have an idea and maybe want to work with you to kind of build that, that collaboration, as we noted, right? Yes, we're okay. open to all ideas at this point. Well, good deal. Now, how long have you been with the Suffolk Public Library so far? I've been here since the beginning of November, so okay. just a few months. All right, well, great. Well, again, again, get a good opportunity to sit there and grow with the library system for both yourself and as well as, of course, for our partners that were out there watching this program who might have an idea and a way to kind of work with the Suffolk Public Library library system to make things happen, correct? Correct. Good deal. Well, Allison and Sarah, I want to thank you both for joining us for this particular segment, and we're going to have more on Suffolk Libraries coming up after the short break. Welcome back to On the Scene, joined now by Melinda Brown, who's the Information and Program Services Manager with the Suffolk Public Library System. Melinda, thanks for being with us. Thank you. And Melinda's going to be talking to us about adult programs and some of the other unique opportunities you have throughout the Suffolk Public Libraries, no matter which one you go to, as far as opportunities you can help our community stay green, do some recycling, as well as some fascinating events that will be taking place this spring and uh, maybe possibly even early summer. So Melinda, if you want to kick us off talking about something that's actually ongoing now, and I believe it's our winter reading program. Right. We have a, a winter reading program. Mm -hmm. This is our second year uh, doing this. Uh, adults and teens can participate uh, through the adult winter reading program, and there's also uh, a program going on for children. Right. 
Um, you can sign up online. You don't have to write a review. You don't have to do anything extraordinary. You just sign up online. Every time you read a book, you enter that in your online log. And we have random drawings throughout the, uh, the session. Mm -hmm. We will go to March 1st. Okay. So every book you read gets you an opportunity to maybe win one of these random prize drawings. And uh, it's very simple this year. We've made it a lot easier for people to participate. Right. And I, I'm hoping that we get a lot of participation out of it and people get the opportunity to win something cool. Now, is everybody reading the same book? Or really, it's no matter what you read, you read what you would like, You right? read whatever you want. Okay. Um, we don't care. Um, you know, there's no level. There's no requirements. Okay. Whatever you want to read. It's not like a book club type thing where no. everybody reads the same thing, comes together and discusses it. We're not talking about that no. here. Okay. No. It's just encouraged reading in general, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. Um, and that goes through March 1st. Now, do you have to sign up in person? Can you do it online? How does that process work? You can sign up online through our website. Okay. Um, if you don't have access to the Internet or you're unsure how to do it, if you come in or call, we can help you go through the process okay. for people who don't inter have Internet access. We can help you uh, go through and sign up. It's really quick. Perfect. Now, I know that obviously you have different reading programs throughout the year. Would you sign up again every time? or Because once you're in there, it's just a matter, I guess, of putting yourself in that particular program. Is that how that works? Well, uh, we'll have a summer reading program. Right. And uh, you'll just sign up for that also. Okay. It's, it's a separate program. Separate program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Well, now we talked about the reading program that's currently ongoing, but I believe you have a number of things coming up. Uh, that touch in a very variety of way, way of, of, of people that they can utilize re library resources. So if you want to kind of take us through that list that you have. Uh, well, right now we have, uh, coming up, we have computer classes uh, that will go on throughout the summer. Our next computer class would be introduction to email. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get involved in sending email to friends and family or, right. or people want to email you, uh, we have a class coming up and you just sign up come in, we spend an hour helping you figure out how to set up your email account, right. get your password, and, um, and people come in. We have a limit of five, unfortunately. Right. So uh, you need to call to register. Mm -hmm. Uh, call any of our branches and they can give you the information about right. setting up and registering for the class. And we'll go through introduction to email, introduction to internet. We have classes for Microsoft Word. Um, we have uh, a variety of structured classes. Right. Also, we have just started a program where if you have um, an e-reader, a laptop, a tablet, anything like that, right. uh, you can come in and we will help you uh, get set up so you can read our e-books, uh, listen to our downloadable audiobooks or the uh, downloadable magazines. Correct. And also with a, a platform we have called Hoopla, you can listen to music, uh, TV shows, and you can watch movies all through your little portable device. And of course, the best thing about the, both the computer classes as well as the, the training that you're offering, again, for your particular e-device, other than the device which you would own, there's no charge for this, no, correct? it's all completely free. Right. All you need is really a library card, mm -hmm. which again is free to get. Right. And then again, once you have that, you can tap into all these resources that you're talking about. Right. And I know this online or this e-inventory, if you will, that, you, that the Suffolk Public Libraries have been building continues to grow. I know we talked about magazines recently, but it, it's interesting the wide variety that are offered through that. We've talked about the books, the audio books, the music, and right. everything else that's being offered. But again, you just need a device which you bring in, yeah. and staff will be the ones handling the classes and everything, right? Right. All you have to do, especially with the one-on-one -on -one with your uh, your personal device, is just call either Morgan or North Suffolk Library, right. and we'll set up an appointment, and there'll be a staff member that can sit down with you one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and we go through setting up your accounts and show you how to download and how to search for what you want to view right. or listen to. So by the time you leave, you're, you're pretty much ready to go. You're Probably you've already go. had a download or two, maybe already handled, right? Right, okay. right, exactly. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, the lot way a lot of that inventory works where if you check out an e-book or possibly look at an e-magazine, I know magazines probably I think are a little bit different than the e-books. The e-books is just like checking out a book here. Exactly. You have a, a, a limit, I think, of how many you can have checked out at one time. Right. You can put them on wait, I believe, yes. in case they're already checked out because the license is being used by another reader or patron. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with the magazines, it's pretty much almost unlimited the amount you can tap into, right? With the magazines, you can, if you wanted to, um, download every magazine we offer yeah. and every edition and there's some archived issues right. so you can go back. There's no limit on that. Right. That's pretty open. 
And that service is offered through Zinio. Am I right yes, about that one? Zinio. Okay. And I believe if you subscribe to a magazine or say they'll tell you when a new issue is out, I believe you get an email. Is that correct yes. as well? Okay. Yeah. You'll so again, get an email that says your January edition is ready. Right. And is it, I don't believe there's a limit on those with the amount of people that can have a magazine checked out at one time, right? Right. Everybody okay. can check out the same magazine okay. if they want right. to. So again, there's no limitation there that you need to worry about someone else having that perfect magazine right. you're looking for on that particular issue. Well, um, now, again, with that program, with the uh, e-device and having the, the readers and things, you want to make a reservation or, 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 or call in ahead of time. That way you make an appointment, not a reservation. I'm going to say appointment, right? Yes. If you, have a, if you call and set up an appointment, we can be sure that uh, a staff member who's familiar with your particular device right. is available. Right. Um, if you have an iPad or an Android device mm -hmm. or something like that, we can make sure that somebody who's really familiar with that right and knows how to set it up quickly and easily for you is available. Very nice. Now, uh, what else we have in the inventory? Because I know we've got a lot of things to talk about here. Um, we have, uh, you know, the, the things we've been continuing with, uh, the computer classes. Right. We've got some new things going on. Uh, we've got a couple of small business classes coming up. Okay. Um, with a, a gentleman from the Small Business Administration is right. coming in to help uh, people figure out how to set up their small business and how mm -hmm. to write a successful business plan. Right. Um, those classes will start on uh, February 12th. Okay. There's no uh, appointment, no reservation. You just come in. To, they'll be at the North Suffolk Library. Okay. Um, we have a How Does Your Garden Grow program right. with the Master Gardeners mm -hmm. at the North Suffolk Library. And they're going to come in and show you how to set up your garden uh, with seeds. Okay. Uh, starting with seeds and how to be successful at that. Um, we are also participating in the Great Backyard Bird Count, which is a nationwide program. Uh, we have information at all of our branches. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something families can do together or, you know, you can do an individual. And you'll just spend a day, you know, a few minutes in a day counting how many birds are in your backyard right. and what kind they are. Right. And we have the information set up there at the library so you can get started on that and you can do it whenever you want. And that's being done in coordination with VCU, is that correct? I think so. I think so. Okay. So, again, it, it's really not a program we're doing, but we're helping a partnership there right. to kind of work to make sure we get people in our community participating, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Now, speaking about participation, I know um, before we started taping, you were talking about sort of the, the going green efforts and all the, the branches as far as the things that people can bring in to have recycled, if you want right. to talk about some of those things there, and as well as being repurposed for other potential users. Right. We have uh, containers at all of the branches for people to recycle their uh, printer ink cartridges right. or laser jet cartridges, whatever they have. Uh, we also have containers for people to bring in their batteries, mm -hmm. and we'll take them up and get them to the appropriate recycling. Right. Uh, we also have containers to take up uh, people's glasses. If right. you've changed your prescription or something like that, you can bring your glasses in, put them in the container, and they'll be uh, refurbished and used for people who need them. Great. And that's in all three branches that, all that three those, branches, those yes. uh, opportunities are being offered, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, with the adult programs, is there a central place, or some, maybe you might be the person, if someone would like more information on some, any of the programs you mentioned, or perhaps finding out maybe what else is coming up? Certainly, the website is a great resource to look at the calendar, but yes. who would they want to contact? Um, you can uh, contact me. I'm at the North Suffolk Library, okay. and you can just give me a call, okay. and I'll help you out. And your number? Is 757-514-7150. Okay. Well, Melinda, thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you. To talk about uh, some of the many things that are being offered through Suffolk Public Libraries. And again, as we noted, that inventory continues to grow. So if you don't see something out there, you think, well, maybe there's not something for me yet, just wait. It's probably coming in the very near future. So again, check out the website. We'll have that address on the screen. A great resource to utilize to find out, again, events that are coming up, things that are being offered both online and actually in the libraries themselves. Thanks for watching this edition of On the Scene. We'll see you next time.